This is from NBC News' Live Tracker. Which of these four issues mattered most in deciding your vote today? And this is for Virginia, uh, Virginia GOP primary voters. Immigration is the most important for Virginia Republican voters. I find that to be uh, particularly interesting. And of course, they're two to one supporting Donald Trump. We've seen these polls already over and over again that immigration has become the principal issue in this election, which is crazy because of the famous saying, it's the economy, stupid. Who was it? Was that, uh, was that Carville who said that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the economy, stupid. It always comes down to money. The issue now is immigration is an economic issue mm -hmm. and a crime issue. And, you know, I was talking to a young, a young business owner. I mentioned this the other day on the show. A young business owner said he's Gen Z. He runs his own business. He works hard every day and he can't afford rent. He can barely afford to live. And then I said, and these non-citizens they're bringing in, are, they're, they're being given debit cards, luxury hotels. Mm -hmm. And he was like, exactly. Not only He's, that. He said he, he said he voted for Biden last time. He's going to vote for Trump this time. In California, they're getting, uh, you know, houses with no payments down. No Full interest rent for a year. No interest loans. All of this stuff. It's absolutely ludicrous. All of this we're doing for people who are coming here from around the world who are taking advantage of the system. We've seen that, too. People are like, oh, I came here because I could get a whole bunch of free stuff. We don't give f free stuff to all of the Americans. And Americans, for the most part, don't want free stuff. They want Yo. the opportunity to work for a living and raise their families and do right. This is actually wild because I'm talking to this dude and he was like, you know, the thing is when they started giving all these illegal immigrants these hotel rooms, they kind of just explained they could have solved the homeless crisis overnight. But they chose not to. But they to. chose to give it to the non-citizens instead of solving the homeless crisis. And yeah. I was like, yeah. don't vote for Democrats. Well, yeah. it does. It seems like, look, from my perspective, like I'm like a radical libertarian. And basically my philosophical position is that governments are criminal gangs by their very nature and that they're always screwing over their own people. But at least historically, they try to mask that. <laughs> you know, like they try to convince you they're not doing it. And it seems like our government is actively making sure that, you know, like it's not just that we're screwing you over, but you're, you're going to know and be humiliated by it. And that's a great example of it. Of course, and the other example is look at in San Francisco when they cleaned up the streets because, uh, um, uh, yeah, she, she. Uh, she was coming in to meet with Biden yeah, and you they just let you know that they can clean up San Francisco like that if they want to well, and they even but they don't said care it. to do they it they even yeah. said it because people were like oh you're doing this because the fancy people are coming to town and Newsom was like yeah that's right and, and that, we want to look good. I mean, citizens don't what matter. What a slap in the face yeah. to the taxpayers. But that's in what San I Francisco. think immigration is generally. Yes, it's it the same number thing. one that it's it, the reason it's a big issue is because Americans feel disenfranchised with the government that does not care about them. It's criminal. It's economic, but it's also just civic, right? You're saying that people who come here illegally, who do not participate or share the burdens that you do, both ethically, morally, philosophically, are able to. It, take advantage from a system that you helped build, right? Yeah. You aren't given the same passes that they are. I mean, one of the stories that always comes back to me is I, I know someone out here in West Virginia who got into uh, like a minor traffic accident and he hit a piece of government property and he was facing jail time and he was standing in front of the, the judge and uh, the person in front of him was an illegal immigrant and the judge said, hold on, before we go, do you know that you can contact this uh, nonprofit organization and they'll set you up with a lawyer and they'll help you and this, that, and the other? Meanwhile, the American citizen who made a mistake, you know, whatever else, uh, was having to pay for his own legal services. The judge was not nearly as lenient or supportive. And it's this direct comparison of, well, you broke the law, but it's OK. Right. But if you are here and we as a country have a duty to serve one another, you are treated as though you are the other. You are the wrong. It's so the, the term that I believe it was Sam Francis who coined the term, but is anor anarcho tyranny. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Yeah, and this is it's, it perfectly sits. And by the way, you know, I was just uh, I was on the phone with uh, Michael Heiss, uh, but who's been on the show before, too. He's the, the founder of the Mises Caucus and the Libertarian Party. Great guy. Totally brilliant. And he literally said this to me, and I never even really made this connection before, but he said to me, he goes, you know, the whole immigration thing, it's just another example of anarcho-tyranny. It's like, look, if, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know the term, the idea is like anar anarchism and tyranny, and even though they seem kind of like opposites, but we kind of live under an anarcho-tyrannical system where, okay, if you're 
a homeless guy who wants to do heroin on the street and live there, no one's gonna stop you from doing that. But if you, citizen, wanna start a business, there's 5,000 regulations that you will be forced to, pe you know what I mean? So like, it's but, anarchy, but you, you, for you have the worst, and the, for wor right, the worst of anarchy yeah. and the worst of tyranny. And th what Michael was pointing out to me when we were on the phone, he goes, look, if you wanna immigrate to this country legally, there's, seven million hoops you have to jump through, an impossible bureaucracy, this whole crazy system, but if you just sneak over the border, you're welcomed in and given free stuff, and you're like, that's really the thing. And you thing. get a court so, date like right. and so they're actually years later. So they encourage people in this weird way. It's this crazy perverse incentive where they encourage you to do the thing we don't want you to do rather than the civilized thing. I think a, a portion of anarcho-tyranny, like the immigration stuff seems on purpose. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen. Like, they, they open the border no question. up. But for a lot of regular crime stuff, what I think is police officers have to confront a violent murderer. Screw that. I'm not taking that risk. Or a guy who is speeding. Oh, easy. Pull him over, he takes a ticket, he, then he's on his way. So for the regular person, it, it's, it's very much in tune with the gun argument. So if we were to uh, ban all guns, then of course criminals would still have guns for two reasons. Anybody with a gun becomes a criminal, and criminals never cared in the first place. Right. Now when it comes to the crimes we're seeing at the street level, these people who are looting these stores know the cops are going to be like, I'm not going in there. There's 20 people looting a store. You want me to fight those guys? You're nuts. But then if there's someone who's driving his car and he goes over the lane or whatever on accident, the cop's like, I got him now. He's going to pull you over and be like, ooh, I'm going to wag my finger at you. I got you. Well, there's de that's definitely true. That's, there's always been an incentive problem with cops in that way. That it's, it's always kind of like, obviously, they'd rather deal with the non-threatening criminal than the threatening criminal. Right. But the other thing that you deal with is like, so look, if you think about like, say, I mean, in California, in some of their major cities, it's like the most clear example of it. But where they'll, de they'll essentially decriminalize shoplifting. Yet, if you own the store and you go, okay, cops, fine. You don't want to deal with my shoplifting problem but I will hire armed security to deal with it myself. They go, well, he's not allowed to have that gun. Yep. He's not allowed to, to deal with them. He's not allowed to grab that guy. And they will come in and prosecute you if you protect your own property. So it's, it's but, like but, coming but, at regular people from both angles but, intentionally to ruin our society. But why? And I think it's fairly obvious. You saw AOC get, get hounded by those activists earlier? That was fascinating. Can yesterday. I just say, by the way, uh, pro-Palestine activist, thank you. Keep it where it belongs. <laughs> harass AOC. Stop blocking roads and just harass AOC. Well, That's well, a better well, way to well, deal with the problem. We'll keep it verbatim, uh, or keep it literal. They followed her. Mm -hmm. like, they didn't even harass her. They followed her and said, will you call what's going on in Palestine a genocide? And she was like, you're a liar or whatever. I totally forgot what I was going to say because you made that point. I'm though. sorry. So now we're talking about that. Uh, what, what we, we were talking about narco-tyranny and crime yeah. and stuff. Well, you, why? Oh, oh right, why right, right. Here we go. Sorry. I got it. We're back. We're back, baby. <laughs> Conservatives don't do this. Conservatives will not walk behind Mitch McConnell walking down the stairs being like, Mitch, why did you do this? Mitch, why did you do that? They fear nothing. In fact, the only thing conservatives fear is leftists because right. you get what's her face, um, Maxine uh, Waters, whatever, being like confront them, get in their face. And so you'll end up with, you know, Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz at a restaurant. Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Sarah Sanders. And a bunch of leftists will come screaming. If you are on the right, the left will scream at you. If you're on the left, the left will scream at mm -hmm. you. And if you are on the right, the right just says, well, OK, I guess. So what ends up happening when it comes to enforcement of law? It is really simple. It is conservatives roll with the punches and say, okay, I guess. And the only threat factor for any politician comes from left-wing activists. So you look at this, allsides.com has a really great breakdown, breakdown of media. All of these news organizations, these, these aggregators, even Drudge, are aggregating from left-wing sources. Drudge was the funniest because they do pull from some right-wing sources and they do pull stories that tend to be more right-leaning, but it's almost all from left-leaning publications. So if it's a story that's somewhat beneficial to Trump. It's still coming from CNN. And then you look at everybody else, all these other uh, 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 aggregators, Google.com, obviously, skewing 64% of its results to the left. Why? If any one of these social platforms, you search for it, and they put out a right-wing story, left-wing activists will complain. The, exam the, 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 the analogy I like to give is it's really, really simple. Back when Twitter was censoring everybody, the, the way to understand why Twitter 
put in place a misgendering policy and why it even comes back? The question is this. Will Dave Rubin lead a band of classical liberals with crowbars and torches to burn down Twitter HQ? No. <laughs> no. That will never happen. Will Antifa on the far left? It's already, they've already been attacked several times. They've, they've already protested universities. They've already firebombed buildings. So anyone who's making a threat assessment is going to be like, hey, these conservatives don't do anything. Why do I care? And these libertarians don't do anything. Why would I care? Yeah, but if we do this, the left's going to get mad and they'll literally come here with crowbars. Just give them whatever they want. Yeah, that all piles up. It piles up into policy. It piles up into law enforcement. There's a video of a cop. There's a guy backing away with his hands up from Antifa. Antifa guys are pointing weapons at him. The cops run up and grab him and arrest him. The victim who's backing away. Why? Because the cops are thinking something really simple. If I arrest one Antifa guy, the rest will throw stones at me. If I arrest this one guy's backing away, they'll cheer for me. We saw this in, in Canada with Dan Dix. He was filming. Far left has attacked him. He's a, he's a journalist. And the police said, you need to leave. And he goes, me, I'm the victim. And they were like, so what? Because the cops are like, if you stay and we try to enforce the law, they will attack all of us. So we'd rather target you. And the warning I've made, which we've already seen, is that if these riots expand into the summer again, because it, it, it wanes in the winter and comes back in the summer. Granted, summer of love was something else. But when riots come, eventually they come to your house and the police are going to be standing there looking at rioters outside your home and you and your family inside. And they're going to be thinking to themselves, how do we stop the chaos, the chaos? And they're going to come to the most, the easiest conclusion ever. They're going to say, arrest the guy in his home because it's one arrest. He won't resist. And then the rioters will not act out. This happened in, I think it was in uh, Wisconsin. I believe it was outside of Milwaukee. Far leftists had, had been protesting in front of a guy's house. This same group oh, of I people. I remember this, yeah. The same group of people had set fire to another house. Mm -hmm. The guy in his home brandished a shotgun. I don't recommend you do that, but he did. So the police showed up to the cheers of Black Lives Matter and arrested the man from his own home. This will only get worse unless we, we recognize. I certainly don't recommend doing what the left does in terms of violence and extremism. Absolutely not. They would seek to weaponize those actions. But right, organization right. is what needs to happen. Yeah, well, look, I mean, so I, th I think you're right about everything, right? And so- Always, that's, thank you, Dave. Well, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say always, but that, last, that last rant was, uh, was totally <laughs> right. Well, look, and look, this has always been true to some degree, right, that the, there is an advantage inherently when it comes to activism that the left wing has over the right wing because right wingers have things that left wingers don't have silly little things like jobs and families and yes. so you, they don't have they're not just going to go protest all day you know of course and yep. but but specifically in this situation i think for anybody who's not a left wing progressive you know a, a, not a woke progressive or whatever you have to recognize that like okay this is the situation the system is rigged against you if you try to, the, part of the reason why you're saying you don't a, uh, advocate that the right embrace the tactics of the left is number one, we don't stand for that, it's wrong. But number two, because you'll just be treated like January 6th, it's not like the summer of love. You will, yeah. they'll use you as an excuse to crack down on all of our civil liberties and they'll put you down with force. So it won't work anyway. So what you do, have to do is recognize that and then go, okay, well, ha, what is the strategic way to fight this battle? And, and we're I, winning. I, well, I will say there's been a few, particularly last year, there were a couple of major successes, which I do consider major successes with Bud Light and Target. And that I organized that organized boycotts are very powerful, despite the fact that this whole economy is run off fiat money and all of this kind of uh, uh, fake, you know, nonsense they still do need customers a lot of these bit and the right half of america has a lot of purchasing power and so that's a very powerful way to do it so but I what, do think, why did those boycotts work in a way that other efforts haven't i i think there just haven't been like strategic efforts like that before because i don't think there was actually a line where almost every influential right winger was like hey we're just and look by the way, there's been a million things that were affronts to right wingers and their liberty and their d decency more than putting Dylan Mulvaney on that Bud Light. But the can. gender thing is for really whatever, what. No, no, no. But for whatever, I'm, I'm just saying the gender thing in general. I'm just saying that thing 
just happened to like strike a no, nerve no, hold enough on. Hold that on. it was it was such a thing that Bud Light was not for those people. Well, hold, hold. And you were coming into their space and it just struck a nerve that they were like, you know what, we're making this our thing. And they've got Bud yeah, Light yeah, is yeah. sponsoring Sean Strickland and Shane Gillis now. Amazing. That's how much but they've one, backed off. One quick correction or context. It was not that Bud Light put Del Mulvaney in a can. It was that Bud Light hired Del Mulvaney to yes. promote a sporting event mm -hmm. to sell beer to children and paid six figures reporting. You're, yes, you're you're right, and and that it was right. It was like a a few specialty Mo cans mocking that March they were Madness. On. Yes, they, it was just too much of an intentional. Like we're just trying to poke at you mm -hmm. that it 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 elicited I, no, 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 no. that reaction. I think it's really simple. The right had been truly the silent majority, as many people had said, and so. When, pe when people look to culture, the only thing they see is wokeness. And so they assume that's the game we got to play. And then, whoopsie, turns out most people are sick of it. Yeah. So Bud Light, they lost $10 billion in sales, $30 billion in market cap. It's a lot yeah, of yeah. money to lose because you hired some millennial woman to run your marketing. And then she decided the fret bro days of Bud Light are over. And she was and, so proud of herself. She and was she, so excited about it. But she precipitated it. Yes. Yeah. She yeah. Got, frat she got fired. Bros she built got fired America. Sure. What is she doing? <laughs> frat Bros built she got, America. She got you put on did, leave. They, they well, I mean, did. I was going to say, no, the majority of presidents have been yeah. a member of, frater of fraternities. So. I mean, if you think of all those guys in downtown New York City and they were like, you know, stealing British cannons and blowing shit up. Like, it's a boys club. That was, okay, that was so, so, so guys, we, we do have a bunch of results and I don't want you to look at the, I, I'm curious. So we've got uh, Virginia, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee have been called for Trump. I'm curious, Tennessee, what's the margin you think Trump won by? 98 so percent that's a bit high no I, oh. I'd, I'd say wait it's 70 it's, it's been called it's been called but all so as of right now what do you think the margin is they've called tennessee for for trump 30 points 30 points it is 80 percent to haley's 16.4 yeah Ooh. that's what i'm looking at <laughs> a bit more than Jeez. 30 points get used to it uh, to be fair to be fair only four percent is in that's why I'm, okay you know, all right, it, right. It's my, it's but she has been losing by wider and wider margins ever since she made that i'm not dropping out speech i mean it was it was like what just over fit trump got just over 50 yeah. percent in new hampshire or then or iowa what? then new hampshire and now what was south carolina hey, like look 68%? at this percent well this yo, the, yo the, hold, hold on vermont is too close to call it's they're they're separated it by is. one yeah. vote in they're Vermont. Still, we, yeah, we. Uh, and I just want to take the time to to point out to Luke Rutkowski, who kept saying New Hampshire is the place to be, and New Hampshire, Nikki Haley got forty three percent, and Vermont is next door. And I said I don't I don't trust New Hampshire because it's surrounded by the far left. And then Luke, sure enough, moves to Florida instead. So, mm. uh, Luke. Yeah, I mean, I don't listen. I don't want to. My New Hampshire people are going to get mad at me. I think they have an open primary there where like Democrats and yep. independents can vote. And they too. outright oh. said so not, they were Democrats. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, it's a little, you know, like tricky to see what exactly was going on there. I will say that, look, there's been a lot of governors who have run for president. Uh, there's been governors that have won the presidency before. It's a it's a really rough sign if you can't carry the state you were a governor of. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like it's even, you know, even um, uh, John Kasich who had no other claim, he could at least say, hey, look, the state where I governed them, they liked me and they picked me. And that could kind of at least let you leave without being totally it's humiliated. Just but I just, I, I need know, a point. F sorry. Finish, that, finish that thought. No, no, that, that was it. Just it, when you lose by double digits, the state you were a governor of, it's, but the, and so, I think so that's real, your real point, point why the, the margins widened and, after that. NBC News with 0.2% reporting in Arkansas. It says it's too early to call, but they've still, they just called it for Trump. Yeah, with there it is. 0.2% in, Arkansas has been called for Trump. I want to point out, they gave him the delegates before even calling the race. How, how did they were like, Trump, Trump's getting them. I, I, but they, they still haven't called yet. Texas, even though, you know, it's it's going to go for well, Trump. Well, 0.2% is just so yeah. early. Texas yeah. wants to get up to at least 1%. Right, they want to go. How can it. you call it for a guy at 0.2%? Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.